I was recently in a very dark place, so I made a life-altering, career-defining mistake. I shaved my mustache. Just kidding. I mean, I did shave my mustache, but that's not the mistake I was talking about. The mistake I was talking about was restarting my game from scratch. Derek Yu, the developer behind Spelunky, has an article about a concept he calls death loops. The first death loop he talks about is the loop of restarting, which is basically when you keep restarting your game because you've learned more or new tools have come out, and you want to start from scratch and do everything better. In general, this isn't a good idea because even if you do rebuild the game better, you'll simply get to another crux where you feel you could do better and restart again. I think it's generally well-regarded advice to just power through and keep working on your game instead of restarting. However, I'm a big dum-dum, so even though I've read this article multiple times and know it's a bad idea, I still restarted my game, and I think it's gonna work out. Hopefully. Now before you grab your scope creep pitchforks and lock me in a room with all the other indie devs who never finish their games, let me give some context on what led to this point. If you watch my channel, you know I've been working on a game called Roguelike Dungeon Tycoon. The game was initially intended to be a month-long project just to take a break before going back to my main project, which I call Project TRS. It was a random idea that I thought would be neat and small in scope, however when I posted the first devlog on YouTube, everybody posted such nice comments that it honestly just went to my head, and I was like, well damn, everyone likes this game way more than the other one. I'll just work on this one. It'll be a huge hit. So even though I didn't really have a good prototype for the game I just went all in and started full-time development on roguelike dungeon tycoon. I'll be honest It was rough going. I haven't even played a lot of deck builders, so I don't know how to make a good one I'm not even sure why I made it a deck builder in the first place It was just kind of the first thing I thought of basically I didn't really think of the game design I just kind of dove in so after eight months of working on it. I was completely burnt out However, I was feeling a bit of that sunk cost fallacy because I had purchased just assets and I felt like everyone on YouTube had such high hopes for the game that I couldn't give up. I'll save you the long saga of mental toil I went through and just say I did give up and I don't regret it. Game sucked and it was going nowhere. Now I'm not saying I won't ever pick up the game again, but I definitely need a long break from it. So now I'm back working on my other game from almost a year ago, you know, the one I actually wanted to make, that I've been calling Project TRS. I made a devlog about this one a while ago, and you can go check that out if you want. Now I'm not too broken up about canceling the game, I'm excited to work on my new one, and I'm just considering the whole thing lessons learned. Speaking of lessons, let's talk about today's sponsor, Brilliant.org. Brilliance is a cool website where you learn by doing, which is honestly the best way to learn. They have thousands of lessons in math, data analysis, programming, AI, and one that I think would particularly benefit me, logic. These lessons aren't just follow along tutorials, they actually teach you the principles of what you want to learn, and then you play around with the concepts hands on. Brilliant helps you actually get better at problem solving, not just memorizing a bunch of facts, which is awesome because you'll not only get specific hands on knowledge, but you'll also get better at critical thinking and problem solving overall. Brilliant would be an awesome way to learn how to program. They have courses on general programming, but also more specific courses on Python, which is a programming language I've personally used professionally, and I think would transfer really well into programming in Godot. GDScript is pretty similar to Python syntactically, but honestly, the thing about these brilliant courses is they teach you how to think like a programmer, and once you can do that, learning syntax is easy peasy. If any of this sparks your interest, you should definitely go try it out. You can try everything Brilliant has to offer for 30 days free when you use my link brilliant.org forward slash Landon develops. Plus, you'll get a bonus 20% off an annual subscription. You can scan the QR code or check the link in the description. Honestly, since restarting my project, I've been super hype on game dev. I've been having a ton of fun working on this one, and it feels like creatively more in line with what I want to be making. Now, it's been a while since I talked about the game, and some of you may not have even seen the original devlog, so I'll just give a brief overview of what the game is. The working title is Project TRS, which stands for Tower Defense RPG Sim. The elevator pitch is basically an RPG life sim style game, like Stardew Valley meets Mountain Blade, but the combat is in tower defense form. I built a prototype of the combat system and put it up on itch for some people to try, and they really enjoyed it, which is good because this time around I have an actual fun proof of concept. Now as I said, I started the game from scratch, so that means I'm not using any of the old code. The old game project was pretty slapdash and hacky, so I probably would have had to refactor it all anyways. If you also consider that I hadn't even looked at any of the code in a year, I think it makes sense for me to have completely restarted. I just don't want to make a habit of it because of the death loop of restarting. 
So where is the game at? Well, I'm currently working on a small vertical slice of the game. The game will have a calendar system in it, and this vertical slice will encapsulate a week or a month of gameplay, depending. I want to keep the scope of the demo really small, but I still want to capture all of the core concepts of the game. Feature-wise, I haven't even started working on combat. Since I have the old combat demo to reference, I figured that would be the easiest part of building the game, and I wanted to work on the other core features first, since they'll take more experimentation. Those other features being mainly dialogue quests and the inventory. I also have a bare bones day night system, but it's not that impressive. Okay, so let's take a look at the actual game. Okay, so here's a basic test scene I have in the game. You can move the character around just like normal top down movement. And if you'll notice in the bottom right, there's a sword icon. That's your main tool, so when you left click, you'll use that tool. You can scroll to use different tools in your toolbar. And these will all do kind of different things in the game. The hammer will build buildings, the axe will chop trees, the sword will hurt enemies. All pretty standard kind of Stardew Valley-esque life sim stuff. So here we have kind of a basic UI for the inventory. It just has slots and items can fill those slots. My inventory isn't exactly like ones you'll see in other kind of uh, farming sim style games where you can drag and drop stuff around. It's basically just an array where each slot is taken up by a stack of items and the item stack can max out. So if you have 99 radishes, which is what this thing over here is, you can't pick up any more radishes. It won't create a new stack. I may change this in the future, and I don't know, let me know what you think about that, if that feels too restricting. It's mostly just for simplicity's sake. I don't think that the drag and drop was super necessary for the game I'm making, and it's kind of a pain in the ass to make, if I'm being honest. This is a much more simple inventory system. The biggest system I've been working on lately is actually the kind of NPC interaction system, since this will sort of tie into the quest system, the dialogue system, everything basically. So currently what I have is when you interact with an NPC by hitting E, it opens up this menu, and I know that the UI is awful and that you can barely see that top button, but the buttons say talk, give, and gift, and if you've played any sort of farming sim or whatever, I'm sure you know what all these things basically do, but I'll run through them anyways. The talk button allows you to talk to the NPC. There's a very simple dialogue system here. The only interesting thing about it is that it marks in my database of NPCs that this NPC has been talked to today, and if I interact with them again, you'll see I can no longer hit the talk button. Again, very familiar if you've ever played any sort of farming sim. The next button, the give button, is a little bit more interesting as it ties into my quest system. Quests in my game basically all have different steps, and one of those steps can be to give an item to a certain NPC. When NPCs have an active quest, and one of the quest steps in the quest is to give an item, this give menu becomes available. If you open it up, you see your inventory on the right, and then the slot to give the item on the left. What's not really indicated here because of this terrible UI is that the slot on the left will only accept the item needed for the quest, which in this case is actually a single radish. We have two radishes here, so if I click on that, you see it only gives one and the other goes back into our inventory. And if I click give, this does a bit of magic in the back end and completes the quest to give Landon, who that's what the NPC's name is, a radish, and all of it works. So that's pretty much where the game is at in its current state. I know it doesn't look like much, but there's a ton of back end code that you can't really see on the front making all of this stuff work together. It's a pretty complicated system, but I think it turned out really well. So I think part of the reason why development of this has been so easy is because I'm using three really awesome plugins that I want to shout out. The first one is Pandora by Bitbrain. I've used some of Bitbrain's plugins in the past. Uh, this one's amazing. I'm super impressed by just like the quality, the documentation, everything. What it is is basically a big database for anything you need in your game. NPCs, quests, items, you name it. It's awesome because you can use it as just sort of a data reference where everything is just kind of read only, but you can also instantiate any of these entities and use them as actual game objects, which is what I do in my inventory. Each stack is actually an instantiated Pandora entity. You can even extend the entities to build your own, which is super awesome. Another plugin I'm using is called Godot Dialog Manager by Nathan Hode. I'm sure you've heard of Dialogic and probably some other Godot dialog managers, but those are all pretty complicated and generally used for stuff like visual novels or whatever. But for my needs, this dialog manager is awesome. It's super easy to write content for and it was super easy to integrate with. The last plugin that kind of makes the whole system work is this quest system plugin by Shomi Kohai. I hope I pronounced that correctly. I'm sorry if I didn't. This plugin is also awesome. It makes the whole quest system I have just super simple to use. As an added bonus, they've even included examples that use Pandora and the dialog manager plugins that I'm using as well 
well. So that kind of just copied a lot of their code, which is awesome. So yeah, huge shout out to those developers who made those plugins. Uh, they're honestly like amazing and have made this whole thing way easier. Definitely check them out. I'm not like sponsored by them or anything. I really like giving credit where credit is due, especially to like Godot plugins that are open source. I think it's super awesome. I also think it's cool to show that like, in game dev you don't have to build everything yourself there's no sense reinventing the wheel if someone has done it better just take that and use it there's no shame in that you don't have to do it all yourself unless you want to spend the next 10 years working on one game just my two cents i don't know so yeah that's kind of where my game dev life is at roguelike dungeon tycoon is kind of permanently on pause if I end up getting inspired or whatever and come up with a new idea for it, I may come back to it. But for now, I'm going to be working on Project TRS, which is a project I'm actually really excited about. Anyways, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.